Welcome everybody to Indonesia Street Food Tour, Glodok, Chinatown in Jakarta. Yeah, so we're going to be watching this video. It's going to be like just going through a street food market and just eating some street food. Let's do it. So we've seen some Indonesia street food videos before, and there are some very interesting, very delicious looking foods. So let's see what uh, Chinatown in Jakarta can get into and how uh, the dishes from China mix in with the like Indonesian style dishes and stuff like that. And uh, Mark Weens, he's a big uh, food international food channel so this should be very informative gets to see some really cool foods and see what we need to try when we're in jakarta yeah let's see it let's do it if you enjoy subscribe like the video check out our travel channel the uh, link is down in the description below and the pinned comment it's epic we'll travel as well and uh here we go Hey, Mark. It's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Jakarta, his, Indonesia. His shirt said it is fat mid morning, more. and Ying and I are walking over to Glodok, which is Jakarta's Chinatown. And actually, we don't really have any plans of what we're going to do there. We're going to beat the traffic and we're going to explore Jakarta's Chinatown. All right. Oh. Oh. This beat. Wow. We, we should have, we should make a to song to that Chinatown beat. We should. Through the back streets, but we are definitely in Chinatown now. The whole it, it's still Jakarta, but you can definitely feel that it's Chinatown. We passed a couple of Chinese temples already, and you can see some of the old Chinese buildings that are evidence that we are in Chinatown as well as I think we're going to walk through a market soon. I've seen some people carrying lots of bags. And also in Chinatown, they also have bicycle rickshaws, which are available for transportation. Oh, oh there's some birds. He just grabbed a bird. He put it in a cage. We have gotten to the market section of Glodok. There is a lot of beautiful looking fruits and vegetables. And actually, this Chinatown kind of reminds me of Bangkok's Chinatown, Yawarat. Very, a lot of similarities. And it's a very tight and busy place. A lot of business and commerce and markets everywhere you look. Bananas. Thick boy bananas. Um, glad it. Fish, bread. Just gonna say everything in a motorcycle. We just took a turn down a side alley. This is just a walking alley, and we are en route to a famous coffee shop. I think it's somewhere down here and maybe to the right. The Market Street is a really great atmosphere, but then when you get down on these even side alleys, it's really quiet like how excited. here. Really yeah. nice. A lot of people are very friendly and there are lots of random oh. things for sale. Just oh. look at this quantity of avocados. That is quite the quantity. Champur. <laughs> Champur. Okay, Champur. What do we have yeah. there? Yeah. Oh. Suka. Ini is kulit. Kulit. Oh, okay, no. That one is... Nangmu. Then Nangmu. Pare. Aha. Yes. What was the thing you said no to? I don't know. <laughs> Interesting, we saw that in the Malaysia one too. They kind of just have like places you come up and they're just like, whoop, whoop. It's like, like a, a buffet style, it. basically. Yeah. We're just walking through the alley. We Orgy? haven't made it to the coffee British shop sauce? yet, but I saw a guy selling shomai, shomai from his motorbike. He had a variety of different $1. things. That's in a lot of food for a dollar. Yeah. And we kind of just chose a number of different things. I think these are the actual shomai, and then there's some tofu, and then he also had one with bitter melon. I think pork uh, stuffed into bitter melon, and so I got one of those. And then this is definitely a Chinese style of a dish, but what really makes it Indonesian is that they serve it with peanut sauce. Mm, peanut so after he finished sauce. slicing them all up, he put a big scoop of peanut sauce, and then he squeezed on some ketchup manis, which is sweet soy sauce, and I think that's kind of a chili 
chili sauce on the mm. side there. So I'm so going to try show my first. Yeah. Dip it into the, the peanut sauce. Oh, wow. That is... That has a very squishy kind of texture. Almost like mushy. like mochi, mushy, glutinous mushy. rice texture to it. Mushy. And, mm, oh. And then at the like tail end of my bite, then I can taste some sesame oil and maybe what a little bit of minced it? pork. I don't know. I have like no idea even how to mm. assume it tastes like. Yeah. That's just a straight up piece of tofu with the sweet peanut sauce. Tofu is weird. I had that A little once. bit of chili in there as well. <laughs> kind of just absorbs the sauce flavor. I really love bitter melon. It has such a wonderful bitter flavor. And then it's juicy and has a, like a cucumber crispness to it. Yeah, yeah, why not? What is the name of your shop? Mm, just vegetarian, you see? Oh, oh, I can yeah. show you. I can show you. As I was eating that plate of shomai, I was standing right across the street from a vegetarian restaurant, and the owner here is really nice, and he invited us to try some of his all-vegetarian Indonesian food. And what I really want to taste, I think I'm just going to get a small taste because we might have a lot of... Hello! Nice to meet you! <laughs> so he has a whole spread of different Indonesian dishes, all vegetarian. And the one that I really want to taste is rendang, which is one of the most famous Indonesian dishes, and it happens to be a favorite of mine as well. But I have never had a vegetarian version of it. I didn't want to explain what these things are. Rice, because I think we still have a lot to eat. So I just got some of the rendang to taste it. We this are is not the rendang food vegetarian. literate. What is in the rendang? What is in the rendang? Mushroom. We make it from our mushroom. mushroom. Oh, out of mushroom. Black mushroom. Black mushroom. Yeah. I could mistake in it for, for chunks of meat. Definitely. Oh, even on the inside, it looks kind of like Whoa. meat. That looks like. Seems a like meatball. mushroom is a common substitute for meat. Yeah. Dumplings in Georgia, they just stuff it with mushroom. Mm. Mm. That's really good. Weird, the texture didn't oh, look wow. like mushroom at all. It looks it's like up. meat, but it's more tender. It almost tastes like cold beef. What? But that is all mushroom. Oh, and then that rendang is delicious, actually. It's a little bit spicy. You can taste the coconut. And these are some kind of spring roll types of things. And he said it might taste a little bit like shrimp. Wow. Vegetarian shrimp? Thing? I think that's bean curd. I'm gonna add some of that. I'd be very curious to try this. I hate mushroom, but I would try that. Because the texture seems so much different that's than awesome. other mushrooms I've had. That is my kind of a vegetarian bite right there. Just solid mushrooms. It's like compressed mushrooms. Compressed mushrooms. Mm. That was impressively good, especially the rendang. And so if you're looking for all vegetarian food in Jakarta, in Chinatown, it's right in this lane. All right, we'll find and it, I'm Mark. Sure we'll find the way. It's really good vegetarian food. <laughs> Oh, nasty champur. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, look at those pictures of women. Thank you. It seems a little random. Yeah. <laughs> those are actually his daughters. <laughs> oh, it is. We finally made it to the famous legendary coffee shop. This place is called Kopi Es Paki. It is an old school Chinese Indonesian coffee shop and it has a lot of history to it. If you look around, you can see a lot of photos on the wall. Mark should be a thing. A lot of Mark. famous people, I believe, have come here for coffee. It's really humid. And I decided it would be a good idea to order a hot coffee. Is a good black cup we should of go there and order a oh, coffee. Is so order smooth. a coffee, and then we'll be like, I don't like uh, coffee. Oh, uh, coffee. Yeah, coffee's so strong. It's really strong. I don't like it. Yeah, and it, it, like I don't know how to describe it, but the aftertaste is like it lingers so much. So then, if you don't even like the taste in the first place, then it just like is like, oh, I'm gonna punish you for yeah. eating this, yeah. drinking this. I should say. Sorry, coffee lovers. 
I don't hey, like coffee. Hey, cup of coffee, get coffee. Mm. Hey, I'm walking here. I every time I hear somebody say coffee shop or coffee shop, normally too, uh, it remind. I always have to say it, coffee shop, coffee shop, because in Barcelona, when you walk down the streets in the touristy areas, there's these guys that walk around with these like cards, and they go coffee shop, coffee shop. Hey, you want to go to coffee? Hey, man, you smoke weed? Hey, man, you smoke weed? Coffee shop, come to coffee shop. Fortnite, video games. Oh. That's what happened to me <laughs> constantly in Barcelona. So uh, if you want to smoke weed and go to the coffee shop, you, go can to Barcelona. Go with, you can go with one of those guys. I did not. Get it sugarless, so it's just straight up black coffee, but really smooth. It doesn't have much acid and just a good, clean, chocolatey Chocolate. flavor. And this is an indoor coffee shop. Do you have COVID house. nose? Like, yeah. yeah. And they have a number of different street food stalls that set up right outside the door of this shop. And so you can order street food and then they will deliver it inside so you can oh. sit down at the table as long as you're ordering drinks and eat the street food from outside. And one of the options right outside the door is nasi Ooh, champur. Yeah. And nasi champur is actually just means rice and mixed everything. There's some crispy pork belly, I think. I think that's gizzard. gizzard. This is like boiled chicken. There's a tiny sliver of an egg. I think this is the chasu, the the roast pork, the roasted barbecue pork. Oh, why is it red? Mm. Oh, that's a lot more flavorful than it looked. That rice is really good. And then that pork is very lean hmm. and it's actually quite tender. But I think it would be improved with some of this chili sauce. How spicy is that we chili that sauce? Here. And that's a little piece of pork belly. I don't know, and it's I got a lot of seeds gizzard. there. It looks like gizzard. It does. That's a little scary. Mm. That's like a sour, salty chili sauce. Sour, and salty. And that's definitely gizzard. It has spicy a very crisp too? texture to it. No. And then, actually, I don't think that was pork belly. I think it might have been chicken. Maybe with a roasted skin. Chase that with some of this soup. And it's there's a vegetable in it as well. <laughs> a vegetable in it. It's a very plain but very salty soup. And that vegetable is a little bit sour, vinegary. So I think it's a pickled mustard green or something like that. Oh. Dip it into the sauce. Somebody, like everything he's eating, like it's... Other than just the straight up meat. That's like sausage. Something I've never had. Yeah. Wrapped around the skewer. Other than mm. rice. Okay, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet. That was a good coffee break stop and another plate of food. And now we are just walking back down the alley. There are so many different choices of foods to eat within this alley. Oh, candy. Mm. We took a little walk down the road and they have a lot of street food carts and so I spotted a snack that I wanted to try. It is, there are a lot of different variations of this that I've seen all over Southeast Asia. It's very similar in cooking style method to a Sri Lankan hopper, Hop. but it's cooked in a little personalized rounded skillet. And what he does, the batter is green. What he does is he scoops in some oh, batter, kind of sloshes it around, and then it cooks. He puts the lid on, and then it cooks so that the edges are crispy. And then in the center, it's kind of Seven fluffy cents. and kind of what um, the? like like waffle like. Mm. The edges are crispy all the way, and then the sweet? inside is kind of sticky, gooey. It's sweet, and I'm not sure, but I think the fragrance might be pandan because of that greenness. What? And it sort of has just a very vanilla-y essence. That's a very simple, but kind of kind of tasty, sweet pancake snack. Hmm. For seven cents. Seven cents. I'd definitely give it a try. Do you have pisang pisang goreng? Ah, uh, that yeah. Oh, can I? Have... Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, pisang goreng uh, one and. Uh, yes. Okay. 
I feel like when we go to Indonesia One of the most common or anywhere in Asia, we need somebody to bring us to the market. We'll be very confused and tell us what to get. And so all over the street, you'll find carts with a big wok full of oil, deep frying, an assortment of different things. And so our, for our next Mr. Weems food here snack, seems very I just ordered a couple food of deep smart. Fried items. Yes. First thing I got is he knows what he's uh, looking for. Goreng, which is a deep fried banana. Fried banana. He took the banana oh. and he kind of sliced it, but then kept the banana all together and kind of made it into like a finger hand shape it's almost like a little I guess you could say that's a hand yeah like <laughs> a little glove strips, but keeping the whole thing together it gives it more surface area for more crunchy batter and i think it's a pretty cool way to cut it a banana cool. or deep frying it oh that sounds crunchy mm. yeah that is quite a lot of batter and it's very crispy. <laughs> and then there's that was a funny kind of reaction. A lot of batter to banana ratio. But I thought he was gonna like in. describe it. He goes, mm, "That is quite a lot of batter." <laughs> He's like, "I don't know." Yeah, that's funny. Quite a lot of batter. Gosh, well, seriously, we went to a Georgian street market. It wasn't really like this, where there was a bunch of food, like people just making food. There was like a couple like bakery style things all over the place. You see them all over Georgia. But we had no idea what to try. No, yeah, there's like a lot of bread type things in yeah. that bakery. So yeah, there's a lot of bread type things in it. And we just got a few things and they were good. But yeah, who knows if they were the best things that you're supposed to get, like the classic things. Yeah, we have no idea. We're just walking around. We see all this stuff and we're like, oh. And oh. even like Georgian cuisine in general, we only knew know about the like two most popular things. We don't know anything else about yeah. Georgian cuisine. And I, the only reason we knew about the two popular things is because they're so popular here. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So when we go to like Indonesia and we go to a street market and there's just food stands, people just making up food all over the place, we're gonna be like, um, um, um Gimme, gimme. Gimme, gimme now. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it's going to be very hard without somebody to show us <laughs> like what to get. Because uh, I feel like we probably missed things in the Georgian place. Yeah. I just walked up, we walked up, picked some breads. I picked a dessert bread and I picked the famous candy thing. And then other than that, I didn't know what else to get. Maybe next time we go through. Inside is the very sweet and kind of custardy, custardy. banana. Custardy. <laughs> Like I want to be in the video. Mm. It's like a little banana sandwich. <laughs> For many of my growing up years, I lived in Africa, in Central Africa. And when oh. my family was living in the Democratic Republic oh. of Congo, I used to eat breadfruit all the time. What? But then since I was a child, I haven't had breadfruit very often. And even where I live in Thailand, in Bangkok, it's, breadfruit is not very common at all, actually. You can see sometimes on the tree, but it's very what rarely. What is his background? Yeah, he lived in the Democratic Republic of Congo in Thailand. As a kid? Yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. Eat it, eat it. So I was happy Mark, to see he from? has deep fried bread fruit. This is just a big slice of bread fruit, deep fried. Oh yeah. That brings back some great memories. Oh, breadfruit is awesome. This is just a natural phenomena of a fruit. It is really like a very starchy, starchy bread. Weird. Kind of like a cross between bread and potato. Huh. Actually, kind of like cassava. It has that really cassava. dry starchiness to it. We're and then so this one is uncultured. just really nicely salted as well. So it's like a, a salty, silky, bready potato. And then it does have a little bit of a fruity taste to it, but that's really heavy. Mm. I think partly why I like this so much is because I grew up when I was a kid eating this, and I have so many memories yeah, of it. Every time he takes a bite, he just that is flashes of memory. He remembers running through the Congonese really like uh, jungles it's very heavy as a and child. Dry. Chinatowns around the world in different cities are one of my favorite places to explore. And Chinatown here in Jakarta has been great. Every single person is looking at There's a lot of food there. and a lot of cool places to explore if you just kind of wander around these alleys. But Ying and I are going to start heading a little ways north to some of the other historical buildings uh, not too far away from here.
There's a lot of bikes. Crossing the street in this area is definitely not the easiest hmm. situation, but we got to cross now. We are in the old historical heritage area of Jakarta now, and there is a lot of traffic in every direction. We made it to the old area of Jakarta, which is called Kota Tua, which is the old Dutch colonial area. There are a lot of heritage Dutch buildings in this area, and we're now in the big square. So we're just going to walk around here for a little bit and just enjoy the scenery. Yes, yes, we came to Indonesia just to eat. <laughs> Within this square, a lot of people are renting very colorful neon bikes and just riding around and then there are a lot of students and we met up with a group of students they wanted to ask some questions just about uh, why we are traveling to Indonesia and what we like about traveling to Indonesia and then one of the questions they asked me was why did you guys come to Indonesia and when I told them that we came to Indonesia to eat they all thought that was pretty funny nice Yeah. One, yeah. What do we have here? Egg. Oh, pan. What? Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to find this one street food snack that I really wanted to try called Kerak Telor. And we happened to find it. So we got lucky and he is making it Ooh. right now. Is that polenta? Yeah. Wait, they'll actually cook it. Oh, where's the raw fish on it, too? <laughs> it was really genius watching him make it. What he does is he first takes some raw rice and then puts it into the bottom of the wok. And then he really heats up the wok, heats up that fire, fans the flame. And then he added in a bunch of different seasonings, including, I know there's some coconut, coconut. and probably some salt. I'm not sure what else. And then after that, he cracked in an egg and then mixed it all up until it was like a slushy omelet rice mixture. And the true genius of what he does after that is he actually flips the wok over. So you would think gravity would make the entire rice you would think omelet that. mixture just fall out of the wok. But somehow it stays on the bottom of that wok, even though it's flipped upside oh. down. And that's when he really fans, fans the flame strong. And so it's a big fire that, that comes up to the bottom of the, the wok there and just kind of scorches that rice and egg mixture. And then once it's ready, then he flips it back over. He scoops it out with a spatula, adds on some more seasoning, including a handful of crispy shallots, sticks it onto a piece of paper, and it's hey, ready. Wow. Hello. <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> this is a street food snack that definitely has some history in Indonesia and I know that it was very popular since the colonial Dutch times and it is truly a, a genius of a creation. I'm going to take my first bite. Right. Mm. Wow, <laughs> that rice, yeah, it's like a combination of a rice and omelet and then there is definitely some coconut in there, but it's not sweet, just natural coconut, I Interesting think. Interesting combo. If you like dry coconut, it's a little bit crisp, but that basically just tastes like a, a roasted rice egg omelet. Oh, wow. Mm. It tastes like the bottom of clay pot rice, the crunchy, kind of slightly burnt bottom. So it has that crispiness but then with egg mixed in and dried coconut. I'm really happy that we had a chance to try that final Jakarta street food. It's 
it's kind of a simple combination, but I love the way he makes it. And part of street food and eating snacks is just enjoying the atmosphere and watching them cook the food right before you. And that is just an absolute genius of a street food snack. I think I enjoyed it more watching the process of it being made than even eating it. I think that is going to be the end for today's video right. about Jakarta street food. Oh. It's been wonderful walking around. I am just like drenched and hot and sweaty to the <laughs> core. So I think we're going to jump in a taxi and head back to our hotel now. Thank you all very much for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thumbs up. And also make sure you click subscribe for lots more food videos. Heck yeah. And I'll see you on the next food video. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Mark. We got some Mark Wayne's Jakarta taste testing. Yes. Wow. I mean, like we've said multiple times in this video, we have no clue what a lot of that would taste like. No idea. Because even you can't even describe too many things past the like oh it tastes like this or it's sweet it's spicy it's salty like you can't go too far because even this comparing it to another food isn't going to do it justice so it's like we, we're we just gonna have to go there and try it ourselves yes we got to we got to get the, there's gonna be some flavors that we've never had anything close to like there's going to be fruits that we've never heard of that are going to be in these things, spices that we've never heard of, combinations that we've never heard of or never thought would be good. Mm -hmm. And then we, they combine them. We eat it up and we're like, oh, okay. I mean, even right. in Georgia, there's like ingredients on things that we literally are like, what is that? What or is this? Eat, or like foods or like something and that. It's just got a title and we're like, oh. That's not helpful. It could be anything <laughs> in the entire world that yeah, you can eat. <laughs> literally could be anything. But uh, yeah, we're here in Georgia and trying. I've gotten a lot of different types of Georgian foods and I'm expecting to do the same thing when we're in Indonesia and the Philippines yeah. and India and everything. Every place we go. Yes. That's what we got to do. Tons of food. Food, 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 food. Hopefully you guys enjoyed another reaction video. If you did, subscribe like the video check out the travel channel we yes. will see you in the next one bye if you want to see us eat food go to the travel channel that's the place food 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 quack 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 says donkey quacker